our strength is in numbers. You know what I'm right. saying? It's that whole thing your mom tells you you're young. You know, right. this is strong, but stronger. I, I was going to ask you, which would you say is harder? But I think you just kind of detail that you think acting is hard. It is. There's, you know, 5K cameras. I'm a nigga who has like pock marks and fucking funny looking, you know, dude, like have a 5K camera pointed at my face. No matter what mood you're in that day, yeah. no matter what's going on, that camera can see everything. And you have to give it to an audience who's going to critique the shit out of it. Right. You know, then bring life to it. It's something that I feel like you, I tell every writer, you should act. Just for just take a one take a day player role. It'll okay. make you a better writer. It'll make you a better director. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think actors should write too because I think they'll understand a little bit of what they're doing. But but I think acting is a really really I, that's why actors are stars. That's mm. why you know you, you can write as great a script as you want, but if you don't have people who can actually bring it to life, it doesn't matter. So I think that's why actors are are you know the stars of Hollywood. Word up. So, is there a story that you haven't told yet, but you'd like to? Yes. I mean, there's a million of them. That's one of the reasons I did this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to do a different version of a family show that they said we could. Why do we, my, my friend says, as, as a saying, she's like, we only get to tell four stories. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I come out of white movies all the time. I'm like, what an amazing story this white man has told. They get <laughs> so <laughs> We get street nigga historical biopic, slavery, you know, and every now and then they'll throw in like, a, I can't get a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I feel like we get like four or five stories to tell, but I feel like there's so many amazing stories for us to talk about, but the only way we're going to do them is like where somebody has to take a chance and do things a little bit differently. And shit, I'm getting drug on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting... I'm getting drug on Twitter, and I feel like- You get like, love too, though, bro. You get love, love too. I get love too, but I'm, getting, I'm not used to being an actor, so I'm not used to like being personally reviewed, and I'm getting drugged, but I, I would take it because I think- can tell you how to be you, though. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's the only reason why the critiques don't really matter in this particular case, because this is your story that you're telling, and don't nobody know how your life was in that moment but you. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody tell you, but you should have been more upset. You're like, motherfucker, that's how upset I was. <laughs> but you've been through it enough to know, and I mean, there's, there's a responsibility that comes with our success. Sure. Is that there's not enough of us. You know what I'm saying? And I, as much as I want to say this is my story, and I'm too, I mean, it is my story, and I'm doing the best I can. I do represent our culture. And then so since there's fo so few of us, right. someone takes certain ownership to what I do and taking a certain opinion of what I do, that's their, they, they deserve that because there's so few of us. Right. And we, I think we don't have the ability to be like, I don't care, I can't do it like that. You know, Tyler, you know, did an amazing thing in this and came on and, and really killed it. And what he said was absolutely correct. You know what I'm saying? He's he doing it for, for He don't give a fuck and he's doing it for his group. You know what I'm saying? And my, my mom and aunt, I remember coming in and they were watching on VHS, the Tyler Perry plays right. 20 years ago. And they were loving it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? They love, and they don't. My mom goes and and they go and show up for a Tyler Perry movie, and they are not showing up because he's black. They enjoy it, right? And there's no way you can take away their opinion and say their opinion doesn't count. Adam Adam Sandler does movies that people are like. They may not be what people say or artists say are like the highest, but they make money. And every time if he does a movie and people don't say it's high, he's not the the destruction of white culture. But right. if if he does something that people feel like isn't what we should do, all of a sudden he's the destruction. That's not fair. But I understand, I understand, Tyler understands this. You understand, you get in trouble, you do something and people are like, you know, you, you did the end of, you're just doing what everybody else does, but you know that- They're used to it by now, man. They know what to expect from me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, that's the thing about trouble, man. You know what I'm saying? When you come in and you, you know what I'm saying? You kind of put it out there so a person can know what to expect. Uh, but I think one thing that should be addressed uh, about this show and and I guess the uh, the Twitter spheres uh, opinions of this show, there's really a thing in 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 our society and in our culture about us not being black enough, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that's 
because everyone's like you said being black isn't monolithic everyone's story is different and important because yeah. there's someone out there who can relate to this even if it's not you even yeah. if you were to tell a story for instance let's just say the stanley character on friday you know what I'm saying? Get off my lawn. So, you know what I'm saying? We would call that guy like an Oreo or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a lot of times people call uh, Uncle Tom when they don't yeah. really realize that Uncle Tom was the good guy in the story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but that guy has a story that deserves to be told because there are people out there that relate to that. And I don't think we should be penalizing each other. We can't afford to lose any of our, you know, people. We don't have enough, we ain't got enough numbers like that. So to try to tear people down and criticize people beyond repair because you disagree with, you know, their level of blackness, to me that shit, I mean, I just think it's, I think it's bad. And it's, it's, it's limiting, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The only way, like we can, somebody can say, I like T.I. more than I like Jeezy, right? Mm -hmm. Just and and that doesn't affect either of your careers because right. hip hop we've put ourselves in a situation where we have enough where we can have critical conversation and right. we can talk about it and we can have versus this producer versus this or this rapper versus that and we can have that but in so many other parts of, of society we don't have enough of us to really sort of start tearing down one another right. we need to actually you know you know the notion of you want my show to work. Right. Even if you hate it, you know what I'm saying? You want my show to work because what it does is it shows that there is an audience for us. And right. that you, when you want to go do your story, your story, which may be different from mine, has a better chance of going right. because my story will work. And if you have a story that's different, but it still speaks to the culture, you have a better chance of having your story work. And so it gives us more, you know, looks at representation and diversity, but we don't understand that because we're so nascent in this these sort of things we're so new you know in these in these worlds that we understand that our strength is in numbers you know what right. i'm saying it's that whole thing your mom tells you you know right. this is strong but stronger yeah, you know what i'm exactly. saying you, you can poke somebody or punch somebody yeah you bring your fingers together you got some i mean yeah i definitely believe that that's something i think that you know what i'm saying the culture and the community just has to kind of grow uh grow into um and another thing I observed, like, you know, white people don't do that. White people do not do that. You look at, let's say, man, the white guy who played in um, Malibu's Most Wanted. Jamie you know, Kennedy. Don't be hating. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, ain't nobody get on there and say he's not white enough. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, even when you got, you know, you got Robert Downey Jr. who actually the only white man that got away with blackface in Tropic Thunder. Nobody told, nobody, nomination. huh? Nomination for that. Ain't got a nomination for that. Nobody told him he wasn't white enough. You know what I mean? When Eminem and Vanilla Ice and Machine Gun Kelly and all of those guys uh, who happen to be white enter into the music industry, their followers and fans don't say, they're not white enough. So why would we critique our, critique our own to the point where we, you know, even would hope that opportunities would diminish? That just doesn't make much sense. I don't know how that advances our people. I, I think that for us, we have to understand. I'm, I'm, we need criticism. Sure. I want criticism. But I don't think the criticism has to come to a level where we're destroying and tearing down and stopping new opportunities. Sure. I always, you know, just, Michael Bay and Jerry Bruckheimer could be doing a panel together. And Michael Bay, Jerry Bruckheimer could say, you know, to Michael Bay, I'm sorry I didn't blow something up, Michael, right? And they'd laugh and people would be like, oh my God, they're so much, they're so bossy that right. they can talk about money and and it doesn't hurt. We can't do that. We feel like we have to just destroy. We have to just tear down, rip apart, find no good in, mm. you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that to me is, I understand where that comes from because I think it's it's a seed that was planted in us. Right. But I think we have to understand that we, you know, there's a way to criticize and critique, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, to help and to, and to speak about opinion and to say like, you know, and but to also still allow the art form to grow. Right. I mean, 
you 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 raise a, a a phenomenal point about us critiquing each other and one episode in particular uh you actually got lena waith and you know you got uh ava duvenray uh you got will packer tim story uh who am i missing um ava tim will um lena ava tim will lena um Tim, Will, Lena. I think that's it. it that's it? Okay. Well, four of your... Uh, oh, Issa. Oh, and Issa. Um, I, I apologies. Yeah, okay. how can I forget Issa? Yes. Right on. How can I forget Issa? We sorry, Issa. Don't, don't, please don't shoot us. Please don't shoot us. Uh, but, okay, so five of your, of your uh, constituents and contemporaries uh, who are wildly successful, uh, and you invite them on your show, to critique you and judge you in your face. <laughs> um, that there's not enough of that. I don't. I don't think people actually see us in that light, doing that to one another enough. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, they don't see enough of us who have a certain level of success actually say, "Man, you know that was some bullshit, right?" You know, okay, how much money you got for it? You know, you got you you got away with what? You know. Yeah. How many times you gonna keep making the same this the same song, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, and I feel like with that healthy dialogue, it pushes us. You know what I'm saying? There's no advancement in comfort and convenience. You gotta we still sharp and steel, and we push each other. And I, you know, uh, applaud and salute you for having the wherewithal to do so. Yeah, I, I I'm so glad you saw it because that was literally what we when we were talking about it. I wanted to say that we don't get seen enough doing that. Right. You know, you know in, in real life, your boys will tell you. You dig you what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like people need to show that we are coming up in this environment, in this, in this industry enough where we are actually policing ourselves. Right. You know what I'm we ha we're having those conversations. We don't necessarily need to, to scream out Oscars too white. You know what I'm saying? We need to go and support the Image Awards. You know what I'm saying? And if not looking Oscars, for acceptance. Yes. If the Oscars are, you know, take us fine, but you know, let's make sure we all show up for the image awards. Right. Let's make that our Oscars. You know what I'm saying? You know, I and I have been guilty of it in my own way. You know what I'm saying? I the idea of like blackish has swept. You know what I'm saying? We've been shown love by them in a, a way that I've never seen in another show. And, and mm. I and have to make it a point to say, like, whatever I'm doing, I gotta make sure I, I get there. I you know what I'm saying? I get dressed up, I get my family out because right. it matters. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Us representing ourselves matters. And the moment we start, you know, I look at the BET Awards. The BET Awards started just to be, BET Awards is better than the Grammys now. You know what I'm saying? It's better it's produced, true. it's more entertaining. You know what I'm saying? We've taken ownership of that. And now shout CBS. Out to Jesse Collins. You said what? Yes. Say shout out to Jesse Collins, who've been producing oh, the BET Awards from the get go. We're simulcasting that on CBS now. Right. You know that's how good it is. I feel like that's what we need to start doing is owning our own shit and making our shit so amazing. That's why I love when Will shows up to the Image Awards and Jay shows up and you show, like, when people show up and show out, it, sh it lets everybody know that this is real. Right you know on. And shout out to the Image Awards, man, who uh, they just gave uh, Rhythm and Flow also a Netflix series. They gave us um, uh, an Image Award for uh, Best Reality Competition series if oh, i'm not mistaken I love that show. man thank you i appreciate that bro and we got to find some shit to do together man whether it's you know what i'm saying you can hire me as an actor or we can develop some shit together yeah, uh, I've, been, I've been hitting and missing but we we, we got we got to figure it out now i mean we got, i got some time and you know hopefully all these things that we're doing independently will mm -hmm. make we'll come together and do something together if we won't have to ask as much that's and we can sort of shape our own course a little bit better than we have in previous years absolutely man i think that's mandatory man but thank you for your many contributions to the culture um thank you for blackish grownish mixedish black as fuck uh thank you for the richard price story coming to america too uh america's next top model also because you know what i'm saying that put us, you know what i'm saying that put a lot of us up on some game and you know what i'm saying showed us some things we huh yeah when we getting the new T.I. album? Man, I am toying with the idea of dropping some shit 
any moment now. You know what I'm saying? If we weren't dealing with the quarantine or, or the, you know, the pandemic right now, I probably would have done dropped it already. It's it's damn it's 99% done. Let's see. So, okay, so let me ask you a question. Me and Hype actually shot a video too. So it's this one record that I did, Juicy J produced it. Uh, actually a, a, a reimagining of sorts of the Biggie record, Hypnotized. So, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck off on that? So uh, me and Hype got together and shot some shit. We just waiting to release it. And I got so many yep. other records, man, that, you know, I'm so, proud of. I seen you some shit have, let, for you to ride to and listen to. I would love that. Or, or let me put some, let me put something, let me, let me play something. Let me fucking play something early. Man, what? I can't I, that's wait. What I, let me play something. Um, so let me ask you this. And this is, so do you feel pressure now when you're like, you know, you're you. Right. Because I'm like, when you put an album out, like you can't, you, you can't put out, no, I want a tip album. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel the pressure of like, which, you know what I'm saying? Of, of like, is it, would you rather not put it out than put it out and then not be, be hot? Man, you know what, man? It depends on the barometer. Like, you know what I'm saying? How are we judging it? You know what I'm saying? By what standard are we calling this hot? You know, because yeah. it's on the radio or because it, it sold a million records or like, you know what I'm saying? Or does the quality of the material actually matter in the judgment of my art? That's all I, that's all I care about. Do you care about selling records? About about streams and about being on the radio and about, I mean, honestly. I mean, man, of course we all want to do dope shit and we all want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't nobody, don't nobody want to put some shit out and you know, motherfuckers don't hear it. But I will say it matters a lot more now that everyone who heard it liked it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or the yeah. people who didn't like it, they can actually identify why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and as long as I know, because you ain't gonna never really hear no bullshit from me, but how am I pushing uh, uh, my art form forward? How am I evolving yeah. as an artist and a storyteller? Um, I think those are the things that matter more to me. Uh, I, I did like my last album, Dime Trap. I'm extremely proud of it. Now I know that it did not reach the same level uh, of, of of notoriety as a lot of my other projects, but I'm still proud of it. It was my 10th project. I'm proud of the artwork on it. I'm proud of the videos we shot. I'm proud of the song selections that made up the complete body of work. I'm not yeah. just trying to toss a song out there and hoping that shit gets successful and have a body of work that no one else hears. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that shit told a story that I feel like, man, fit me in a, in a moment in my life. But I ain't get like, you know, music ain't paying my bill for real. Like really, my, my catalog really is, you know what I'm saying? I'm still getting money off King and trap music and like, and that's really what pays my bill. So yeah, I ain't really- I, I feel like even as I hear you talking, I told you like our original, you're such a storyteller with your music. Maybe that's the thing we could, the idea of like you doing something sonically that you have a visual in mind for, you know okay. what I'm saying? That, that there's a picture, that there's a movie, that there's something like a, a movement that you're, you know, recording that we know. What are the visuals to accompany this? I, I Maybe there's something, because that is, I think you're one of the greatest storytellers, you know what I'm saying, in the game. Man, and thank so, you. I got an idea I want to run by you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I won't put this on the show or nothing like that, but this is okay. the, it's called Washed. Okay. And now I think the same format, kind of like a scripted reality, kind of breaking the fourth wall some kind of way. But it's about, it would be a, a reality show would be about rappers who society would see as washed up. You dig what I'm saying? I wanted to do that forever. Yeah. People don't want to, no, I swear to God, I, no, literally when you, I, I, not that I want to do that show. I've thought about that. The notion of like, I saw somebody, I saw like, please don't push. So I saw Nelly. Okay, right? and I'm like Nelly's rich, right? as, <laughs> but I'm, as my brother, I, he is as a motherfucker, and like, and nobody like Nelly sold units. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, a, control, two times con control clap control culture. That's but right. Like my daughters, they they don't know who Nelly is, and like you know what I'm saying, like you know, the, and I'm like, do you? Know? And so the notion of like Nelly's fine. Right. Nelly has done what an artist is supposed to do, and is living his life. But the <laughs> idea of how people see him. 
what people see about that. Like, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think you got artists like me, Nelly, uh, Big Boy from Outkast. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's so many Rich of them. niggas. <laughs> the niggas who still got the nigga, I got the same fleet of cars. I got the same jewelry. <laughs> I live in, I got more houses. But, you know, because you hear this motherfucker shit on the radio every day, you think, you know, that shit still, you know, the greatest shit in the world. But I do know that fame, and I think this should be kind of like the undertone of it. Fame, that shit is like a deep sleep especially when you first get it. You dig what I'm saying? You come from absolutely nothing. You take a nigga like me out the trap and you got them put me on a worldwide tour, platinum. All of a sudden I'm rich beyond my wildest dream. And you could be looking me dead in my eyes and I don't hear shit you saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what we got to understand. I, I have to remind myself of this shit all the time, man. It took me going to prison, coming back, back and forth, that's how I kind of like woke up, like, whoa, whoa, shit. This yeah. shit is, you know, it's a real, real life, life going on here. Um, and I think that, you know, visually kind of depicting and presenting that I think is, a, is an opportunity that, you know, I look forward to taking advantage of. Yo, yo, all kidding aside, with you just doing fucking rhythm and flow and us doing like that, that particular format. Right would fucking sell because it's it's almost like whatever happened to okay you know what i'm saying like uh, it's almost like like and i'll google like whatever happened to you know what i'm saying like i saw trick daddy got in trouble and he had some and i was like whatever happened to trick Daddy? you know what i'm saying like the notion of you know and and some of the stories are not going to be as as bright as others you know what I'm saying? Gonna, <laughs> some, some of the stories are going to take some dark turns right but i i do think it's an interesting really 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 e I'm, I'm into elevator pitches okay. and that elevator pitch meaning like you get somebody on the elevator you got that much time to sell them something right you know what i'm saying like this is an elevator pitch like you get it's such an interesting world you know what i'm saying that shows and like I, i'm i'm you know snoop's my, my brother you know what i'm saying like and i'm snoop's a really interesting version of this because snoop is so, remains so relevant culturally right but like you know snoop hasn't put like a, a hit album out you know what I'm saying, you know, right. and but he's he he hit so hard. You know what I'm saying? He's fine for life. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he's you know, but the idea of like every story is not like that. And hearing Snoop's journey and how you sort of you have to sort of be able to reinvent yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like you had the number one podcast in the world. You right. know what I'm saying? In the and it wasn't something. I mean, this was like a let's see if I can do it. And and then all of a sudden you hit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, as a producer in television, as an actor in, in films, and like, you know, the idea of like keeping reinventing yourself is a really important notion. And I'm, I'm, I, I think that that show could be really interesting to see like which one of us have gone into real estate, which right. one of us, you know what I'm saying? It's not gonna like all MC be- Hammer. MC Hammer, MC Hammer is also an interesting, uh, interesting story. You know, yeah. everybody know about him blowing all the money and you know what I'm saying? And they say that he went broken now, but they don't know that he's been investing in uh, uh, Silicon Valley ever since he kind of stepped out of the spotlight. And now he has made as much, if not more money with his investments. I didn't know that. Yeah. Chameleonaire. Chameleonaire is another one, absolutely. So, I mean, I think there are a lot of stories, even, uh. What's his name? Spectacular from Pretty Ricky. Oh, I heard, hold on, he's on the tech side. He's on the tech side. He got one of the yeah. biggest companies that kind of shows artists how to maximize the use of their social media platform. We could, uh, click, we could click over and sell this show over the phone. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> I like, hey, I, 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 I'm picking up what you're putting down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Here expeditiously, brother, we have a tradition. Now that tradition is the word of the week. Now, the word of the week is usually a word from my vocabulary that I, I, I select out of the blue based on our conversation and based on uh, the character of the guest. Um, my word that I've selected for you today, raconteur. A raconteur. Raconteur. That means a storyteller. Absolutely. But, but even more specific than that. Raconteurs are gifted storytellers able to spin amusing tales from everyday life. You dig what I'm saying? 
Uh, and now, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll take that because that, that means that, that puts me close to being kind of like a rapper. <laughs> you <dig it> up? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Rappers are rocket tours as well. I would call, I would I would also call myself or consider myself one as well. Uh and now what we're gonna do here, brother, I'm gonna use this shit in a sentence so people who just not seeing this, they could go off back to work or or, or the, well actually they ain't going no motherfucking way. They're gonna go home and they're gonna use this motherfucker like they done known the word their whole life. That's all right. Go home. <laughs> all right, so here we are. Kenya Barris and his writing team are brilliant rocking tours who make witty observations and create riveting stories around our everyday struggles. Brother. I, I, I accept that. I thank you. I appreciate you. Thank I you. salute you. And thank I'm also you. gonna hold you to that other shit we were talking about, man. I'm gonna get you live. I'm in. And, and I, want that I, want that, I want that hoodie. Say that shit over the phone. <laughs> Say less. I have one to you, man, within two, within three, four uh, shipping days. All right, dog. I appreciate it. All right, man. Love and respect, man. M much more success. All right, All right, this expeditiously. All right. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.